is Rom Guruji here and today we're going to see what Aiku UI is all about. Aiku 3 is currently the cheapest Snapdragon 865 phone available in the Indian market. It's I think world's fastest Snapdragon 865 phone until now. And it's a really nice phone, has a great screen, great haptic feedback, great processor, LPDDR5 RAM and UFS 3.1. But it ships with something known as Aiku UI. So what is Aiko UI and I know you are hearing about it for the first time. Aiko UI is a custom skin of Vivo's Funtouch OS which in itself is a custom skin of Android. But this gets a lot of things right and tries to bring the Funtouch OS close to stock. right? Tries because it still has a lot of features that are not available in stock. right? So firstly there is no control center. Now this has a quick settings panel which is really nice and really good right and uh, the default launcher has a drawer but i'm using nova launcher to set the default launcher uh, you can go to i manager and in app manager you can go to permission management and set default app settings now talking about i manager and this is something i really want to mention this is like a one-stop shop for all your security needs okay there is an antivirus included that you can block unwanted calls you can encrypt your apps and you also have a file safe box so all your security needs are in one app which i really like and uh, i would urge a lot of other developers and manufacturers to actually use this thing because it makes it so much more easier for the user saying this the settings in iku ui are so cluttered there are so many features that is difficult to access some simple things Moving on, let's go to the settings. While going to settings, you realize that Aiku UI has a lot of features that people actually ask from custom ROMs, right? Like the blurring and notification panel, the cool animations, and you know, uh, in general appearance, right? So we'll go to the settings. As you can see, there are a lot of settings, and within these settings are a lot of sub settings, right? So one of the cool cool features of Aiko UI which, which will attract a lot of people which a lot of people want from custom ROMs is dynamic effects. So there is literally an animation for everything you need in this phone right but the biggest or the best animation effect that I really need and actually use is something called as the light effect for notifications. So this is basically edge lighting and you can customize edge lighting as much as you want as you can see it looks really cool you can change the duration width transparency and um, in the default one you can also change the color to different colors and it's really nice but there are certain limitations so you can only select um, you know a number of apps that can be notified on your always on display so even if the light comes up and that app does not have an always on display or notification enabled you really would not actually you know know that you have actually received a notification because on your always on display it will not display, uh, display that icon all right so we're not going to go to the always on settings as you can see there are a lot of animation in case you're interested you can go to the settings page and change to whatever animations you like all right so uh, moving on when you go to the display settings uh, you have a lot of settings including eye protection dark mode both of these features can be enabled based on time so that's really nice when you go to home screen uh, and lock screen settings you have always on display there and so the always on display is really nice and it's really good right so the always on display actually will help you you know see all your notifications this is something that's missing from oxygen os and i have been using oxygen os uh, on my last phone but the problem here is you can only select four apps of whose notifications will be displayed on the always on display so it kind of terminates the purpose because i get notification from four seven apps so can i only see notification from four apps so that's i think this should be expanded and i hope the company releases an update for this Right. Uh, moving on, um, you can set different themes. You can change the home screen settings. Uh, like you can see, you can uh, change the icon size, the corners, etc., etc. You can also have dynamic icons that. Uh, so if you are using the default launcher, every time a notification comes, the icon has a small animation, like everything in this OS. Right. 
and uh, basic security features like face unlock and fingerprint sensor work a lot of um, apps don't support iQOO's fingerprint for unlocking their app when I'm talking about banking apps but a lot of them have started supporting it now so that's really cool again that is not something iQOO has to take care of it's the choice of every app developer so if a certain banking app developer does not want iQOO UI's fingerprint sensor to work with their app it is their choice right okay other than that um, it has an ultra game mode which i really like uh, you can enable off screen autoplay so you if you are off screen uh, the game will continue to play in the background so you don't lose your ranking etc it has a 4d vibration motor which i think is amazing and we'll get to that in a while and you have the air trigger buttons about the air trigger buttons i would like to mention something um, so the RAM management is pretty good on this phone but uh, the RAM manager kills certain apps that you might require for example game center so the both monster key button if you press them together uh, the game space should be opening but a lot of times the app manager uh, the RAM manager kills the game center app which disables the game space uh, shortcut using the both monster keys so that is something i hope that i could fix this in the next update right other than that it has gesture navigation as you are seeing it has digital well-being so basically everything else is there it uh, but something that i really really find different as compared to other phones is uh not the ringtone the ringtone is pretty okay normalish but with the ringtone what happens is there's a vibration effect so when you follow music rhythm what happens is the motor vibrates according to the type of ringtone you have this only works for the default included ringtones but it's really good because it's as if the rhythm of the music is being followed by your vibration motor that's why the vibration motor is so nice and so cool other than that the touch feedback on the phone is really great uh, in terms of haptic feedback like uh, the haptic feedback is really soft and you don't feel that irritated with it like you do on other phones um, another thing that is uh, that it supports hi-fi DAC so that's really nice and uh, it really makes your audio experience better by bounds and leaps trust me it makes your audio experience really really nice yeah and other than that it has a headphone jack so that's always a plus point but that's not anything related to the system the system runs very smoothly it has a 180 hertz touch sampling rate so yeah every touch feels more responsive on this phone but obviously it's not comparable to 90 hertz it the phone just feels more responsive because the touch is being recorded a lot faster all right other than that uh, the brightness is fair enough and the outdoor legibility is really nice and it does have the dc dimming feature the screen itself has great contrast color saturation and the color accuracy, accuracy of this panel is really good the software does full justice to it and it's really good so i hope you like this video understood about iq ui if you do like the video, please like, share and subscribe. Thank you.